Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Everything in this video can be found on the public domain. The full disclaimer is down below. Lots of love and many blessings your way. And thank you to everybody that helped contribute to the story. Okay, so if you haven't heard, Ghislaine Maxwell is in FBI custody. Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's dad, was a really good, close friend of the royal families. And Andrew considers Ghislaine Maxwell one of his closest friends in this world. She's only fresh in custody, so there's no telling what's about to spill out. But in the beginning, when she was on the run, directly after Epstein himself was arrested, the rumor is Andrew is the one that was helping her initially hide out. And of course, that's not good for him or the royal family. Not a good look. And all of that's going to come spilling out for sure. But hear this, at some point during this hideout of hers, Andrew totally blew her off. He ghosted her just like Megan would do. She was completely on her own and ventured down to New York, which is like the dumbest mistake if you're hiding out. And that's where she was apprehended. But listen to this. Now, I'm thinking it was the queen herself that told Andrew, you might want to pull back. You're already in hot water. Why would you want any affiliation with this one? After Andrew decided to pull back, he didn't want anything to do with it because the feds were hot on him. They needed him to cooperate, and he flat refused. He was not leaving his mama's side. So once he cut all the strings that attached him to Glenn Maxwell, here's what took place. Immediately after this, she put a hit on him. Listen now. Y'all, there was a whole lot going on that we didn't know about this entire time. It had nothing to do with the quarantine or COVID. The royal family were tipped off. Hey, look, there's some goons after you. Andy has a lot of information. And once he came out publicly agreeing, you know, he's willing to sit down with the FBI and give what he knows. They've been on alert. The Queen hired $500,000 more security than what they already had. Now, according to a palace source, they said this. Elaine's not to be trusted. She's worse than the mafia. If she turns on you, it's a bad situation. And so for this reason, the head of security have been meeting twice a day with the queen to give Andrew's whereabouts every single day. She is extremely worried that he's going to be snuffed out. So she feels like she has to keep a tight leash on him for his own protection. Y'all, they're saying the royal advisors are in a scramble at this very moment, trying to prepare themselves for whatever Ghislaine may say regarding Andrew's involvement. And it's a make it or break it time for the monarchy. You know what, you guys, I always knew this lockdown, this quarantine stuff, especially when it comes to the queen and the royal family, was nothing more than a big old bunch of BS. And it was told to me just this morning, things with Harry and Meghan as far as being out and about in the public, just may be picking up. Queen's orders. Hey y'all, if this proves to be the case, man, that's gonna speak volumes as the role Megan and Harry have been playing all this time. And speaking about them playing, here we go. So he decided he wanted to give a little Megan original speech for the Diana Awards 2020. Let's put a pause on that two seconds. I needed to talk about this. It's really bugging me. Y'all, his teeth are all kinds of jacked up. How embarrassing, but as a hairdresser, let me point this out real fast. When folks have hair transplants, typically the doctor will take hair that's from, you know, a pretty thick area. If you're thicker in the back of the head, behind the ears, you know, between the legs, the butt, the back, you get my drift. And it's like planting little seeds, you know what I mean? They just poke it on in there and hope it grows root. I ain't trying to be gross, but I'm going to point this out because it is what it is. And as a hairstylist, I can pretty much tell you where these transplanted little patches come from. I don't know if this is karma. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Maybe it's irony. Sure don't want to film inside the house. I assume that's too personal. But he'll step outside with ass hair on his head. And it totally serves him right. How's that? Anyway, so he came out, you know, giving Megan's speech and flailing his hands in the most dramatic of ways. And I guess she decided to skip the cling wrap over the lens. Maybe one of their sugars felt sorry for him and donated a, you know, a decent camera to him. Anyway, so he's giving Megan's speech on racism. It's clearly not his. We all know Harry's nothing but a racist always has been. And like a true pageant mama, she catches his attention from behind the camera. And that's when he brought the dramatic hands into the speech, mimicking her almost exact moves 
from that point forward that she gave in that non-solicited graduation speech, letting everybody know that their true main focus is fighting racism. What a complete joke. You don't think they're being puppeteered? And it felt so disingenuous, the entire situation. What do y'all think about this? I'm curious. I sure hope you're having a really good day today. I'll see you soon and we'll talk fast. Y'all stay safe and be blessed.